Earth Systems is a Bachelor of Science degree. You will study in Earth Systems very interdisciplinary perspectives on environmental problems in the contemporary society. These may have as a very common theme sciences and training across the sciences, but you will also engage issues of culture, issues that come from history, issues that come from the social sciences that include very important policy and cost perspectives, economics. All of our state students in attaining their Bachelor of Science degree in Earth Systems take classes as a foundational suite of classes that span calculus, chemistry, physics, biology, geology, economics, and statistics. That is the starting point. They then take classes that are meant to build that systems perspective on the biosphere, both in oceans and in terrestrial environments and how it functions, on what we call the anthrosphere, the human dimensions of global change, looking at the issues of history, at issues of cost, at issues of policy through case studies. Beyond this foundational training, if you're going to be an effective problem solver, you must have skills and ways of thinking that are broad, that connect across fields and show respect for different viewpoints on problem solving, but you must also have real skills and deep content knowledge. And so our students, after their foundation training, break into one of five depth areas in which they concentrate their courses. These depth areas have been constructed in a way so that students can determine with some structure what the different paths, what does it mean to study the biosphere. They have a lot of structure on the elements of studying the biosphere, but a lot of flexibility in building their own curricular choices. So let's talk about the tracks. Those tracks are study of the biosphere. By study of the biosphere, I mean example areas like biogeochemistry of Earth systems. I mean conservation biology. I mean human interaction with ecosystems. I mean study of ecology, ecosystems. What are they and how do they function? Uh, an example course of study might look at anything as, as specific as plants and soils to changes, broad changes in ecosystems and how do we know that they're happening and how do we know that humans have been the drivers of those changes in ecosystems. Another track that you might focus in would be our energy track. Students in the energy track focus on energy resources, they focus on energy policy and energy technology. In that balance you come to be able to think about what are the energy options that are out there? Why have we made the choices that we've made in the past? Are some energy sources that much better in terms of, of the bang you get for the buck, so to speak, the energy density of certain sources, that this is why we chose them? What have been the consequences of those choices? How do we move in a different direction? What might those costs be? What policies help or inhibit that? This is the nature of study in our energy track. In our oceans track, students in the oceans track, interestingly, have a fairly classical ocean physics, ocean chemistry, ocean biology, and geology, but they also have the op option to take a policy and law class that is on the California coastal margin, looking at resource decisions and how we make them, where the land meets the oceans, and all of them must have at least one away experience, whether that is studying the oceans while at Stanford in Australia, going through the Stanford at Sea program, or studying at Hopkins Marine Station. So it has a very applied component as well. Our anthrosphere track, is the track in which students most closely embrace the social sciences for um, study of, of human interactions with the environment. The component categories within the anthrosphere track are sustainable development, an enormously important category, social entrepreneurship, and environmental economics and policy. Frequently I see with students who are interested in the anthrosphere track, those social dimensions, that their work also expands into one of the other track categories that we have. For example, they might want to study economic perspectives on energy, and, and this is a possibility in Earth systems as well. The final track that I want to talk about is our land management track. Uh, the land management track students focus on natural environments, on our, our freshwater environment, on our land environments, and they also study, importantly, on urban environments, on the built environment, that human component piece. Uh, a very common and popular subcategory within this track would be, for example, uh, sustainable agriculture. What feels for all the world like a natural environment, and yet agriculture on a global basis is a heavily managed system. So what does that interplay look like? What does the system look like? How do we manage it? What are the economic costs and benefits? All of our students, in addition to the foundational requirements and the track work, must do one fairly large 
a researcher internship project that is an individual researcher internship project. This is frequently undertaken after the junior year, in the summer following the junior year, although it can also be through, for example, Stanford in Washington or another um, overseas studies away program. This is meant to really help you to exercise fully for the first time your interdisciplinary analysis and problem solving skills. We want you to push yourself, we want you to tackle a novel question, working closely with a mentor on this supervised research project. Then in the senior year, for your capstone or synthesis project, you come back and yet again, working on a novel problem, you exercise your problem solving and analysis skills, but this time working in a group context. The objective in sending students through both individual and group-based problem analysis and problem solving exercises is that it is imperative for us that we be training a new generation, the next generation of problem solvers, who are looking at complex problems in a different way, in a way that deals with uncertainty, that deals with multiple positions, asking better questions on the understanding that you are only going to get better solutions that work in place if indeed you have faced the complexity and asked the best questions to begin with. I want to give you a for example that, that comes from the senior seminar, the capstone class that I teach, where students synthesize their knowledge. So there were several students who came to me and said they really wanted to study agriculture, and they wanted to study it um, as a sustainable system and the possibility for this to be a sustainable system, and they were just interested in my ideas. And the question I asked was, for farms that have been in the same family for more than 100 years, which you might refer to as century farms, do those farmers, because of the strong family and cultural heritage they have with a place, with land, do they manage differently than for families that are and farmers who are, who are newer to the land, for example? And so I actually supported them. I paid for them to travel and talk with people in the Pacific Northwest. I will tell you that I had some strong suspicions about what they were going to find, but I needed for the students to find these and discover them empirically for themselves that farming is very much economically, uh, it is a tricky business in which to find oneself. It is often a question whether you're dealing with local scale produce that you're putting out to farmers markets or whether you're dealing with global commodities like wheat. One year to the next can be an adventure in survival economically. And so farmers really have to be thinking about the biology of their system and its fertility, the soils themselves, water availability, the cost of that water if it's changing through time, the energy that they're using in order to do what they do and how much they're paying for that. Um, it, it really is a, a, a beautiful synthesis and blending of the different track perspectives that we want them to have and the different science, social science, engineering, humanist perspectives that we want them to have in their training.